oh, it doesn't matter. It's Facebook. It'll all, when Facebook goes out of business, all these videos will be deleted. <clears throat> will they? Yeah. You sure? What, Facebook go out of business or these videos be deleted? These videos be deleted. Or they sell them. Yeah. Yeah, pretty soon there's going to be a commercial where they, I'll put my hand like this, <laughs> and then in a few weeks or days or hours, Facebook will automatically put a, uh, a box of cereal. Yes. <laughs> That's the future. Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome to the Kitchen Table Conversations here on Realities Podcast. Oh, see? <laughs> Facebook went out of business. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to see if you're... It always happens up. once. That's kind of nice. Have you done the live... Uh... I haven't done it myself, no. I, I've, I've watched you two times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, oh, and, and a SpaceX launch. <laughs> oh, which was... Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, which was actually, yeah, the day before yesterday when it was cancelled. So it was a very, very short podcast. Yeah. Go live. Three, two, one, lift off. It's like SpaceX. <laughs> tuned to a live edition of realities the kitchen table conversations now here's your host mark fronseca renero live again yeah <laughs> we're live it was probably because i made fun of the company i'm not going to even say the name <laughs> we're live on tuesday night yeah, it's a Tuesday, so that means it's another Realities program. Woo! Someone told me, don't call it podcast, it's just a program, it's just Realities. I was like, okay, okay. Um, it's a kitchen table conversation, and you're joining out there on f f f f f Facebook, and some people are joining via podcast, which I am recording, so I'm a sound engineer, I'm your host, and I run the bar at this house, which serves mostly tea. I am Mark Fonseca Rendeira, Rendeiru. Rendeira is another guy. And uh, at the, but you know all this because you listen to this program. Uh, to my right is the great, great, uh, talented guest of the evening. Uh, he's, uh, I need more description. He's, um, he's uh, eloquent with words. Uh, he can play Ultimate Frisbee, though we won't discuss it tonight. And um, his hobby is what brings us together uh, tonight. So uh, there's Mark Schmehausen. Hi, guys. See? Live. You can just... Yeah. And further to the right is our returning champion co-host, Amna Chowdhury. Ah, hello, everybody. Hi. <laughs> I have to look up at the screen every now and then to acknowledge. And uh, Mark, I'm very glad uh, to have you as our guest at the table today. Uh, you and I have known each other for a bunch of years, which is a very good thing. Yes. I can vouch for him. And uh, for most of those years... You, when you're not busy uh, working or with other hobbies and, and all the other things that life has, you are into what we call bushcraft or, um, I don't know, do you always call it that or do you call it more like wilderness survival? No, I think bushcraft is a pretty good, uh, pretty good name. Uh, I mean, it, it, it looks a lot like survival, but there are some differences. And uh, so when you're doing it, uh, when most people do bushcraft, they like to call it bushcraft. Yeah. And, I, uh, I don't know. Amna, you ever hear of this like in the past before I told you, come on over? <laughs> I never heard of the term bushcraft, but the I'm sure what everybody must say to you is that, is that like the guy on television, Bear Gryllis? Oh, yeah, oh, it, right. it, it, it looks a lot less like it okay but it's what he's doing is more like survival okay and and more much more entertainment okay than what the most bush, bushcraft people do well i'm excited to hear more about what you do then yeah, yeah. I, I mean my memory of it besides you was you you're definitely the biggest influence on me in this in this realm but uh back in the day i don't know was it bbc but there was uh, Ray Mears, right? Yeah, yeah. And there was a show. It was what was it called? Bushcraft. Was yeah, it? yeah. He had a, a few shows called Bushcraft and a few sh uh, shows called Survival something, mm. and uh, that was actually a big, uh, a big boost for the whole bushcraft hobby field. First okay. in the UK and later uh, abroad because they were these were uh, really quality BBC programs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and many people saw them and they thought, "Wow, that's really cool. I want to do that." Yeah, which which consisted of what? I mean, Ray Mears walking around the UK. Yeah, first in the UK, uh, and and basically showing outdoor skills like how to make a fire or how to read animal tracks or how to make a rope. 
um, and later, I think he got a bigger budget mm -hmm. and he uh, got uh, got a whole team to travel to other countries like uh, Australia to visit the Aborigines or the Inuit in northern Canada and look at those those guys, how they did survival and bushcraft yeah. and uh, learning skills from them and, and filming it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that was I mean, nice. I think uh, especially for, I can try to speak for like an American audience, perhaps some, I think some discrepancy has to be made here. Survivalists in the US are often associated, I think, with, with, with guns and uh, when the zombies come out and, and I've got a go bag in the trunk. Yeah, uh, like the preppers. The... That's the better term, right? Yeah. The preppers. Yeah. That's a future topic on this program um, where another friend of mine is coming over. So, <laughs> or, or, the, that are into that. Yeah. or the television show Survivor? Uh, well, no, that's a whole other area, which kind of is related maybe to bushcraft with the idea that we leave you somewhere and you have to figure out how to live. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess that a big distinct, uh, big difference between survival and bushcraft would be with survival, often you're like, you're somewhere where you don't want to be. Okay. Like you're in the wilderness. Yeah, yeah. And, and your main goal is to stay alive and get out as, as fast as possible. Okay, yeah. And while with bushcraft, you actually, you like to be in the wilderness. You like to stay there and you like to make life comfortable for yourself. Okay. So uh, you, you basically, you use the same techniques most of the time, like mm -hmm. building a shelter or making a fire or finding water, mm -hmm. but it's just a uh, yeah, different approach somewhat. So it's, yeah, it's not a big difference, but it's, it's, it's a bit subtle, uh, but uh, it is different. Okay. Yeah. Something I never asked you, how did this all start anyway? I mean, what was the first thing that you found yourself like, oh, yeah, I'm I'm in the bushcraft world? Yeah, it's, um, I guess, it, 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 mainly it was two things. Uh, one, just uh, I, I wanted a bit of adventure, yeah. like uh, some Indiana Jones type of thing. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, as you do, as, yeah. as do. many people do. And the other thing was that I, I, I've always been interested in um, uh, like the hunter and gatherer lifestyle of the past. Yeah. Uh, because uh, we as humans have lived such a long time as hunter gatherers. Like if you look at human history, it's been like over 90% of our times we've been living as hunter and gatherers. And I was wondered how, how it was, uh, how, how, it's, how it's like to live like that. Yeah. So then I decided to take a, survi a survival course, mm -hmm. a one week uh, course in the Netherlands and- uh, Offered by the University of- No, no, that was actually <laughs> by, uh, offered by e Extra Survival, which is the biggest survival school in the Netherlands. Yeah. And okay. then, yeah, no, you, you learn how to make fires and how to, how to stay warm and how to find food. And uh, so I could, could sniff a little bit at this primitive lifestyle and how, how it's like to live like that. Yeah. So that's kind of the beginning of all this. Huh? That's the beginning. Yeah, yeah. I did this first five of course. I really liked it. And uh, for instance, I learned how to make fire by friction yeah. or, um, you know, how to collect water from uh, under, under the ground and, and all these uh, cool things. And then I decided to do another course and another course. And I ended up doing like seven or eight courses. And then I started doing my own trips and uh, like like uh, t uh, trekkings and uh, bushcraft uh um, uh, trips and uh, organizing bushcraft weekends. So. Yeah, this is something. So it's some not something that you do. You ever do this alone? I mean, a lot of it seems like you got to be with people. Yeah, yeah. It's almost always I'm with friends. Yeah. Uh, oh. But sometimes, uh, like for for a night, I, I go out alone in the woods. I, I sleep in the woods and <laughs> I come out. <laughs> and uh, and I, I once did a one week trip by myself in the Scottish Highlands, uh, making uh, I don't know 50, 60 k uh, loop, and that was by myself as well. And that's interesting and cool, uh, but it's also you're you're just by yourself. So it's I I, I prefer uh, doing it together. And m most bushcrafters like the company of others. So. It's, uh, I mean, in a way it's, it's, it's fine to go out by yourself and it's, uh, and, uh, it's totally possible and uh, it's just a nice way to find some quiet, but it's also a very social activity. Yeah. And also learning skills from each other. You, you need other people. So, or, or YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's, yeah. yeah. 
So when you started, what uh, what areas would you go? Would you stay here in the Netherlands? Where in the Netherlands can you even get yeah. away from everyone else? Yeah, it's... Uh, I mean, it's a, someone's the, backyard. Yeah, the thing is, we don't have any wilderness at all around here. I mean, we have some some wooded areas and yeah. some, some yeah. nature parts, but uh, not really wild places. But you can still uh, do all these skill things. Like oh, yeah. if you want to know how to make your own spoon or how to bake bread, bread on a campfire i mean you can still do it over here and so for yeah. learning these things it's 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 uh, fine I, I went to drenthe for like three years in a row for these uh, survival courses yeah yeah especially and, when uh, it comes to things like yeah how to make fire which is not i don't think as easy as as we could well some might hollywood might make it seem in some films and so forth so you could yeah you could learn that here you don't have to go so far at I least know. that level yeah. Are you sure the weather the weather here in the Netherlands might be a little bit wet? <laughs> how do you oh, make fire well, in the well? Water. That's so that's that makes it <laughs> a challenge, a and you and yeah. that's that's how you learn. And uh, and actually, basically, all survival skills you can how to make a signal fire, or how to build a bed uh, from natural materials, or uh, how to make your own tools. I mean, that's that's still all possible in in basically every country. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. yeah, and it's interesting to me how um, I mean, of course, on the one hand, but on the other hand, how fascinating the way technology plays a role in it, organizing it all, and also like getting the information in one place and sharing it or or de developing it. Mm. Um, so that, that's an interesting thing. On the one hand, it's a it's not about technology. On mm -hmm. the other hand, technology facilitates the whole thing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the. The, the bushcraft weekends we organized, uh, I did like 11 of them with a couple of friends where uh, we just invite people over and everybody would teach each other something. So it's like uh, workshops organized by ourselves for ourselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, we just did it online. We organized, the, we made a website and, and got people together that way. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and like uh, for, sk for learning skills, YouTube is a great source and... Uh, yeah, things wouldn't get as popular as they were with television, like uh, Ray Mears uh, or or uh, um, Bear Grylls or some of the others. Yeah, and uh, no, for sure. Yeah. Hmm. Um. Yeah. No. Uh, anyway, so um, slight pause for a second, just as I look at the screen to make sure. Uh, I get a compliment saying, who's that pretty lady? I should say, you get a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> Although it might be directed towards me. Um, and uh, everyone else looks fine. If you have any questions as we go, and if you yourself are in the world of uh, either uh, nature hikes or, or um, bushcraft, do do say hello or something. Say something. Um, as we continue down the, the road here... Um, there are a couple of things that I've been fascinated by over the years. Sometimes I've gotten to ask you, and sometimes time just passes and I don't get to ask you. Um, I'm going to go right for the uh, the snow, the ice. Uh, I remember it this way. I'm looking through social media, you know, the stream of things happening, and Mark has gone somewhere, uh, apparently to Eastern Europe, and it's a weekend, perhaps, of uh, being in the snow with... What were the requirements? Not much. Oh, you mean the, the Wim Hof? Uh, yeah. Uh, there was a week in Poland. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it, it was all about. Uh, he's called the Iceman. Sure. The he, Iceman ha he has like uh, twenty world records when it comes to facing the cold and and being okay. like the long the guy who swam the longest under the ice underwater, hmm. or the guy who who stayed in an ice bath the longest, or. Okay. Running a half marathon, I think, bare feet in Finland in the snow and Ooh. all. So you got a whole bunch of records. And then he, he was always saying, well, I'm not that special. I can I can learn my cold skills yeah. up to a point to other people. Yeah. And uh, so he started giving courses. And I went on one of these courses. So what do you have to do in such a... Because I don't remember. I, sometimes I've told people, oh, yeah, they don't wear any clothes. But that's not true. <laughs> no, well, we didn't wear ma uh, many clothes. I mean, uh, <laughs> really? we, we wore some clothes. <laughs> what, what, but uh, yeah, well, so one of his... Uh, basically, his goal is is, is healthy living. So he, he wants want pe <laughs> people to be healthy. Mm. And uh, one of the ways to become healthy in, in his mind is to, uh, expose you, to have regular exposure to cold. And yeah. so we would do stuff like uh, walk around with just sh short 
pants and no shirt and no shoes and no uh, in the snow or we would go uh, lie in a stream of water like in the winter That's, so i it, remember it, those photos yeah it's, oh, it's just just you know one degree centigrade the water or something yeah. and so it's it's a it's a very it's a big shock in the beginning mm -hmm. but uh you know after a few days you get used to it a little bit yeah and uh, and so this exposure to cold, together with uh, breathing techniques and a little bit of yoga and a little bit of meditation, uh, yeah, is is a healthy thing according to him. And that there have been some studies where uh, they 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 compared people who did his course to people who didn't do his course control oh, group. Right, right, right. And they um, and then they measured their health in the end. Well, they actually they actually uh, gave him a little bacteria that made them all ill. Oh. <laughs> And then the the control group oh. got ill, like so, so flu flu like symptoms that last only for a day or two, yeah. and the, the 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 group that was trained by Hoff uh, didn't uh, nobody got ill, <laughs> so that was an interesting experiment, yeah, that, and that that got me actually into taking his course. I've read that he can control his heart rate, but like he, he's gotten good at this. He's he's learned how to yeah, I I've breathing kind meditation. Of I kind of forgot about the heart rate, but I think he, he, he controlled some things that were thought controlled by the uh, autonomous nervous system, like nobody normally controls it. Yeah. And he could control some of these things and including, uh, I think, some, some biochemicals that actually prevent you from getting ill, for instance, ah, with so the, he could decide in, in, in the experiment. Not. Uh, where, yeah. he, where he got injected and then uh, and so that was yeah that, that was an interesting study yeah and uh because otherwise i mean it's kind of it's it's uh, it's hard to believe a claim like by this crazy dutch guy with a beard who runs around in his so he's <laughs> dutch. without a shirt yeah. uh the ice man in, in, oh, yes. in the snow oh i thought he'd be polish <laughs> but nope. no he's no? he's dutch uh -huh. and uh but so th 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 yeah there's actually been some research into this and uh yeah. and then uh, yeah th that was interesting did, did this have a lasting effect on you do you think well, uh, not for me, not really. No, I, I thought it was an interesting week, yeah. and uh, and I got a bit better facing the cold. Right, that's and, what uh, I want to know. Yeah, yeah. To and, this uh, day, uh, no, not to this day <laughs> because I, I, yeah, I. Uh, one of the things he says, well, you should take a shower, uh, a, 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 cold a cold shower, shower. Uh, regularly, and uh, and I did that for a while, and after a while, I stopped. Uh, but for me, the reason was, I mean, I I felt fine. Uh, as I was, mm -hmm. and also uh, without his techniques, I feel healthy and fine. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and I didn't notice that much of a difference with his techniques. So okay, uh, I didn't keep it up. Yeah, but uh, for for some, actually, many people in the group, uh, there were twenty uh, students. Uh, they were uh, really changing their lifestyles uh, in impress impressive ways where they would uh, keep up his techniques for, for quite some time. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I see this as so like connected to, I mean, okay, we're in a city, but it's slow food and uh, handmade and, and like, I don't know about you, but I, I, I see it all very related. You know, the groups of people, it's not only men, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> who, who, <laughs> want to uh not just with the okay putting the the extreme cold to the side for a second uh but also the how to make your own fire bed shelter uh it's it's it seems to be a, a nice fit with what's going on in our societies no yeah there a little bit i guess <laughs> i mean there, there is a whole of course there's much attention for a healthy lifestyle in general uh, right. lately and uh, so that's connected. I, I guess there's and there, there's some groups of people trying to get back to their roots in a way <laughs> to, to the, ancestors. the basic basic uh, uh things of the past i guess yeah and uh yeah there are there are some connections there i i think so yeah yeah, yeah. it's funny how it all comes kind of not full circle, because the circle would be like thousands of years long, but uh, yeah. Um, I guess the, the whole paleo food movement, that's also a little bit of, I'm, of that. I, I dare not say this in front of some family members who are into it, but I still don't understand. <laughs> really, because there's a very famous Frisbee player who has a very well-read website. Mark's, I think his name is Sison. Okay. And Mark's Daily Apple. Yeah. And this is where I learned about Frisbee to begin with. And and where they promote paleo. Yeah, absolutely. Which is supposed to be a cave person's... Uh... Yeah, and always talking about getting back to forced bathing, how, you know, about 
you know, the benefits also of, of being in extreme cold. Summer, yeah, yeah, I think also there's... Also extreme heat. Yeah, you know, a lot of this stuff. There, there's lots of emphasis on diet. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, some people have a, a somewhat broader look at it and they yeah. include m- uh, moving a lot and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. stuff and like that. Yeah, and also those shoes with the the, the toe shoes of five... Yeah, the five, yeah, five yeah, fingers. Yeah, yeah. Still yeah, got yeah. them? I still got them, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot of tracking on those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A, a problem, however, with the whole paleo movement is that they, they make a lot of claims that it's very healthy and it's more healthy than other diets for instance mm-hmm. and uh, and sign there, there hasn't this the scientific basis uh, or the scientific there haven't been really studies proving that yeah so a lot of it is assuming that it's more healthy than any other diet you can think of almost and uh mm-hmm. so i think but yeah bef- before becoming really Thank really you. into it i mean really Try to yeah see if you can find some um, reliable data that 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 proves that it's 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 that good. Yeah, I'm gonna sound ignorant, but uh, just for fun, you know, I always look at the uh, the old Instagram uh, stream and uh, someone's dinner will come up and it's, it'll be tagged paleo, and then the next day another different kind of dinner will come up and it's tagged paleo, and after a while, I've seen every kind of ingredient tagged paleo. I don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> well, if it's on Instagram, it must be true. That's true. <laughs> well, but, but but the theory that like it's got a tag. the the theory behind it is interesting, and I, I has a lot of merit, I think, where they go like, well, we've been living this hunter gatherer lifestyle for such a long time, uh, like we, our bodies and minds are are shaped by evolution to, to for that lifestyle in a way, yeah. and now of course we live completely different, yeah, but uh, that the change from hunter gatherer to our modern lives has been pretty quick i mean it's like ten thousand years maybe okay and that sounds like a long time but on an evolutionary time scale that's that's like nothing Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) so i mean genetically we're still for you know more than 90 percent identical to to uh, stone age hunter gatherers and so the the idea that uh our bodies were made for that lifestyle uh, if you if you change your lifestyle a lot away from this hunting gathering lifestyle, you uh, s- uh, some things might go better, but other things might go worse. And and like the, maybe the diet has 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 gone worse in a way, uh, in terms of healthy ingredients, uh, and a lot or, or the our movement yeah. patterns where we we, yeah. we sit the whole day versus yeah. if you walk around all day. So that 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 idea behind it if it does make sense mm-hmm. but but before you say something is better or healthier you have to prove it and you have to, you, you need some some solid data to mm. <laughs> to show that that that's the case and that's uh, so in some ways still missing yeah just um i guess it's not a known fact in my modern uh, life here but i i closely followed that diet for many years oh really yeah. still to this day not to this oh, day okay. because i, I moved to the netherlands and i had to start eating bread Oh, bread is not part of, right, okay. Yes, but huh. when you come to the Netherlands, if you don't eat toasties, they throw you out. <laughs> so, <laughs> as I did not want to get arrested, I had to start eating toasties. Hi. Are you paleo eaters out there, Facebook stream? Let us know. <laughs> Type in the box. Uh, so, what I do like, Mark, it, it, you've always, and it, I think it shows even as you describe uh, or, or, or address some of these issues, you're an experimenter, mm-hmm. uh, and, and I've always liked that. Um, I don't get to hear about every experiment, although you do document a lot of them, I think. Mm-hmm. So so in that sense, I know. But I always remember, we talk about the five-finger uh, um, shoes, or are they shoes? Foot covers. And I remember you covers. were you were interested in running, and you did, run mm-hmm. some of the local marathons in them. Yes, yes, I did. Uh, Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, that was another uh, thing where I went like, well, in the past, people wore these primitive shoes either sandals yeah. or moccasins or things that and I th- or, or, or even bare feet and I thought how does it feel so I started doing that and then while going bare feet I mean it's uh, it's possible actually but with the fiber and five frames you have a little more protection mm-hmm. and I started running and I did a, foot, a couple half marathons mm-hmm. and uh, and actually I found out they they work perfectly fine and you're yeah. just I, I was just as fast as on normal running shoes yeah. And uh, I even uh, got, uh, became uh, the uh, Dutch champion barefoot uh, running Did you? 2011, wow. I think. <laughs> and, oh, it uh, just occurred to me there's going to be record holders and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, well, there was a, a very small group. It's like a niche group <laughs> of this. <laughs> no. so it, it wasn't. It wasn't that I, I didn't run that fast, but uh, there was just not m- many people doing it. So, but, uh, yeah, it, it was cool to experience. So if I want to like 
maybe potentially go down in history. I should really work on this. There's still space for uh, some achievement. Exactly. Find a very niche sport thingy and, and there you can be really good. We were at a pub quiz the other day and the question came up, well, a couple of months ago, actually, for this question, the question came up of what is, it was a guesstimate question, what is the world record for, or at least the Amsterdam Marathon record for um, running it in a suit? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember that, uh, that, that was quiz. a really yeah. hard one. Oh, yeah, you were there. I was one. there, yeah. <laughs> Any suit so, or business suit? We, we, we won that question because, oh, uh, yeah. because you were there. No. Yeah, no, no, no. We were lucky. We just, we just guessed, yeah. Uh, it was a business suit, right? Yeah. yeah it was a business suit. Yeah, yeah and, and I think... And he, what was the yeah, answer? Yeah, he, he, he ran pretty fast. I mean... <laughs> That's the answer. You'd be surprised. No, no, no. I think maybe, maybe three hours or yeah. just below three hours, but still pretty fast. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, let, let's, I mean, if we can, some of the highlights of the experiments. Um, sometimes your experiments are about you yourself, I think, but I think other times it's also about uh, tools. Uh, I definitely remember, well, first of all, you've always discussed things that are actually very popular on Facebook, like what's in my backpack? What do you actually mm. need? What do you not need? Mm. I don't know if that's an experiment as much as a sort of wisdom. Yeah, that was more like sharing a bit uh, of, of outdoor tips. But uh, but I've I've done for instance uh, a couple of years ago um, we went on a, a 100 kilometer hike okay. in in the summer in the south of the Netherlands uh, without food and we were interesting oh. how how that would affect us okay and uh, so it was like a two and a half day hike and we would just wild camp in the woods with only uh, a poncho and a wool blanket. <laughs> so we were uh, really uh, a really uh, primitive gear. No tarp. Uh, well, the, we used the poncho as a tarp for sleeping, oh. and we would uh, and we would just roll in into the wall blanket and and a small backpack, so no food, uh, unlimited water. I mean, we uh, we had water enough, and then we had what well, we had the rule that we could only eat what uh, stuff we found we would found in nature. Uh, but we only found snails, which tasted really awful. Oh, so you still <laughs> tasted them? Yeah, yeah. Right, so, we only okay. found snails. And we didn't eat them. And well, and we found uh, this plant, it's called uh, clis in Dutch. I forgot what's in English. But uh, And so we knew there was lots, lots of calories in the root. Uh, so we tried to dig up the root, but it took so much energy digging. Yeah. We were thinking, ah, this, it takes up more energy to dig out the root and then we will get out of the, ah, uh, out yeah. of the root. So yeah. we ended up eating basically nothing. And, and, but we felt that the, the surprising thing was we, we felt we were hungry and uh, the energy was going away a bit, a little bit, but we were still able to do the hundred K fine. There's no problem. Is there, I've not tested this. Is there like some people when they get hungry, they get a little bit miserable, right? Yeah. That happen? Well, and then I, when, what happens after that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, actually, I do have to say we were uh, three guys, so me and two friends, mm -hmm. and one guy he, he has a bit of a history of, of low sugar levels and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, he he actually couldn't make it, so yeah. halfway he stopped at a bakery and <laughs> and, and, and he yeah. ate yeah. chocolate and bread and all this kind of stuff, and then he could keep going. Huh. But uh, <laughs> me and my friend, we were able to do it without food. Yeah. Do you find that it's um, sometimes more mental? When you're when you're in doing bushcraft, is it more like a mind? Um, in, you mean intensive? For, yeah, like even like this, a fasting and stuff. Is it just mind over body? Uh, I think it's probably a combination, like okay. with many of these things. Um, uh, like for instance, the 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 guy who couldn't handle the no food. I mean mm -hmm. that that for a large part, I think that was really a physical thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, often it's it's a combination, and I think. Especially in longer term survival, it, it often it becomes more of a of a mind uh, thing where psychologically it gets harder and harder. And um, but no, it's it's really a combination because after yeah, if you can't find enough calories, if, at one point you will uh, yeah. you will really you will die. <laughs> but uh, that happens much later than most people think because most people most, most people think survival is about all about finding food. Yeah. But but the, the the thing is, most survival situations, especially uh, around here, are, are only like two or three days. And uh, then the most important thing is just staying warm and, and drinking hmm. and, and just, just stay put until they find you. <laughs> yeah. right. uh, and uh, it's not about finding food then, because often finding food 
costs more calories than than you will yeah. get. Or digging it up. And uh, yeah. yeah, like like the the root example. And uh, so if you you know if you stay warm, you drink not uh, enough. That then most of the time you're fine. It may maybe make a sig- signal fire or a, ma- make sure they find you, mm-hmm. and then uh, and then just uh, save your energy. And uh, that's often the best strategy. Hey Mark, growing up, was there someone in your life that kind of took you on these kind of things? I was just thinking as a, as a kid, I I, I didn't. I, I think of camping first, and in this country, camping is like uh, swimming and breathing. Um, you know, people go camping, but w- yeah. was that a big part of your childhood out of curiosity? I mean, this is something you would ask in the beginning of an interview, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, the funny thing is it, it wasn't, I, 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 just, no. I did some sports in, uh, when I was a kid, but no, no camping or, mm. or trekking. I, I just got interested in this whole hunter gatherer thing and survival thing, uh, it, like, like in my mid late twenties. Yeah. And then I, I started the whole thing. Yeah. So I guess this is a very basic question to go back. Um, what exactly can you do? <laughs> <laughs> We're you thinking mean, of like, hiring like, you. Like skill wise, you mean? Yeah, like so. I'm guessing the stick with the stone is a fire. <laughs> what else can yeah. you? And you can make like Indian style arrowhead. Oh, okay, stuff. Some, I, yeah, we, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Should, should I? Should I <laughs> yeah, get some? Because I or? can get a yeah, better we'll, idea. With, okay. We'll take a quick thirty seconds or so to get stuff. I'm yeah. going to read some comments and, and yeah. stay with us, audience. You're watching uh, the Kitchen Table Conversations. Realities podcast is uh, what you can find in the any podcast uh, program, and we're talking with Mark Schmehausen. Also, there's the uh, onlinecaveman.com is where a lot of what we just talked about you can actually see and read. Um, we're about to, uh, yeah, let's move some stuff around. He's putting all kinds of contraband on the table. <laughs> Let me read some of these comments here. I don't know. How do you read comments? You push a button. Oh, no. I switched languages, but I didn't read comments. Uh, no. This whole thing is... Oh, there we go. Uh, we got... Why are you, no, what are you doing over there, asks Yannicka, who I think is a friend of yours. (laughs) Earth to Amna. Well, Amna's busy, Yannicka. She's doing a live podcast, obviously, obviously. Pat is here. Hello to everybody tuning in. Uh, Yeah. All right, so we got some objects. I've got the camera in the iPad. And yeah. uh, we can, I can hold it up to the screen. I think I can do that. Yeah, yeah. Oh um, wow! Look at this. You can, uh, f- for instance, uh, t- so uh, I can write home. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you want to make fire, but you don't have a lighter or matches, you you can do it by friction. And uh, so one of the ways doing this it is is, 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 wow. is with a with a bow drill. Where uh, <laughs> this is like the, the hearth. You put this on the on the on the ground, and you spin this. In inside uh, the little hole, and you use you use a uh, a bow for that for that. It's just a branch with <laughs> with some rope, and uh, which you have crafted. And and you will push you will push the the drill down with something you hold in your hand like this. So when this spins fast enough, the the drill, uh, you will you will grind the wood and you will create a, a fine powder. And at one point, it will start to glow in there. Now, oh. I don't know what kind of wood all this is, but what I do want to know is, is it how, how hard to find? Does it have to be very specific? Uh, no, you it's can... It's about the friction. You could, yeah, yeah. You can use all, all types of woods. Uh, the, the somewhat softer woods are easier to work with, mm-hmm. like uh, poplar or, or lime or, uh, but, or hazel. It's not that soft, but that, it's nice and straight. Uh, but it also will work with oak or beech. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, you have to work a little harder, uh, but uh, the thing is, you have to. It has to be dry. Uh, yeah. So you might have to. If it's wet, you might have to split thicker wood to find the- to, to find dry uh, oh. the dry part. And um, and then it's just the technique is you have you have to practice that quite a bit. It took me like a week of practicing before, like on my first course, yeah. to to learn it. Yeah. But it's it's really cool because the moment you 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 do it, you're like, oh, I just created fire without uh, <laughs> without meshes so you feel really uh, good it is yeah, I mean, it's a workout though you have to uh yeah yeah all yeah. right all right yeah wow so, so yeah that's that's one of the uh the things i i guess another thing uh, uh we can show is like a really primitive tool it's a, a flint axe wow where it's just a piece of wood and on the piece of wood is some some deer antler and inside the deer antler there's a piece of flint that's a deer antler. Yeah. 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 Ah. 
and yeah, it, no. now and it looks really primitive. It, it is actually really primitive, but, <laughs> but uh, uh, it's not insulting. We uh, we only made it like you know a few years ago, but it it really works. I mean, I chopped down small uh, trees with with this. Uh, yeah. They were green trees, and, mm-hmm. and gr- uh, so the, the the wood is a bit softer than uh, dead wood, but. On, on the works. hikes that you take, on the treks, on the trips, do you limit the tools that you're going to bring? Do you set like a criteria, almost like rules of a game? Um, a um, knife, I mean, a knife, yeah. N- it's a little hard to fly with that, but uh, yeah. Check in, uh, check no, in. Not, not really. I mean, sometimes when we try to test something like the, the no food uh, poncho blanket uh, hike, then, of course, we have to have some rules. But uh, lately, I've just been going on uh, on trekkings where uh, there's no rules, but I just like to bring as little as possible. Yeah. Uh, but also f- uh, for weight. So, I mean, yeah. the more you bring, the heavier your, your pack is, the less distance you can walk. So, uh, so what I do now basically is a bit of primitive camping. So I prefer instead of taking a tent, I I, I prefer taking tarp. a tarp, or instead of t- bringing a, a stove, I we cook on 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 a campfire. Yeah, and so things like that. And so then you have to bring less and less. Yeah, uh, and uh, but it's all about just being out there and having fun. There, there's there's no rules. Uh, yeah, yeah, in the end, it's, all. yeah, yeah. Can you hunt animals? Ah, uh, yes, because hunting is often listed. As one of the skills, at least in some bushcraft. I mean, this deer antler hikes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, 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 we didn't hunt this. Fell asleep. Oh dear. <laughs> um, yeah, no, my uh, my hunting skills are not that great. Um, uh, I've I've done a little bit of hunting and a little bit of trapping. Mm-hmm. Oh, trapping. And uh, and and both are uh, well to do it in the Netherlands. It's really hard because you you need uh, a license to do it. Well, a trapping a trapping is illegal anyway. <laughs> but uh, for hunting, you need a mm-hmm. license, which is complicated. But I've done it in other countries where where it is allowed, mm-hmm. uh, uh, or at least the trapping is allowed and the hunting is. Uh, well, you have to be a bit care- careful. Let me put it that way. <laughs> uh, but uh, I've only done it with primitive weapons. So uh, these are like either bow and arrow or throwing sticks mm-hmm. or, or slingshots. Mm-hmm. And uh, so these are things I make myself. And uh, But the thing is, you, you have a short range on which you're accurate. So you have to get really close to the animal to catch it. And so to make a long story short, I've, I've never, <laughs> Hunted I never, I never caught, um, uh, animals like that. I have caught a lot of, uh, I did do a lot of fishing as well. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. and there uh, we, I've been, you know, I, I caught a lot. By uh, hand? Uh, well, even by hand in, in Romania, but in, in streams where, where you, it's called tickling, where you go in, on, on, under the bank and you, you trap them with your hands. But but most of it I've I've done it with um, just uh, a foldable fishing rod, uh, okay. st- uh, things like that, or okay. or uh, night lines okay. where you uh, you catch them overnight. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. At first I was like night line, night line, news program. Oh, oh no, yeah. 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 You bore him to death. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I got him. I got him. No, for 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 <laughs> it's it's ideal for survival because you 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 don't want to spend too much energy and time fishing. So yeah. what you do is just make a line with a couple of hooks, put worms on them or whatever lay him uh, time to the side and just wait a couple hours and you can mm-hmm. just sleep or relax and then check the line mm-hmm. uh, later and see if there's a fish on it and so it's a uh, energy efficient way of so everything of i've ever seen on television and in movies then is just entertainment that's not right well the, the, they show the, the guy and he catches it the, the hunting is is really especially if you if you use homemade uh, weapons and tools it's really hard i mean yeah, but I'm at, uh, especially in the netherlands what would you hunt even here yeah well the, uh, you could hunt uh i mean people who have a license they hunt for instance uh, roe deer okay or uh or rabbits or hares okay. or pheasants or uh doves or ducks uh, geese uh so there is some hunting going on but to get a license it's it's expensive it's yeah. uh, it's it's difficult yeah. And, um, but, uh, yeah, it, there's not that many people doing it over here, but way less than in the U.S. or something. So. Okay. So we got fire. We have food, hunting. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah then, shelter. Shelter yeah. with the poncho. Yeah. 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 And also, I mean, you build other kinds of shelters. I've seen photos over the years. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it all depends on where you are. I mean, if you're up north where there's lots of snow, it, it's you, you use snow like uh, a Quincy, for instance, yeah. uh, or another type of snow shelter. 
um, uh, if you're uh, in in an area with lots of reeds uh, growing, I mean that that will be your your material to build with. So you made like a reed reed shelter, yeah. and uh, you basically you use whatever th- you can find which is nearby. Yeah. And again, you want to use as little energy as possible. So the things you can just ru- use right away that's that's bad. Or if you find an, a fallen tree where uh, you can shelter under, I mean that's even yeah. better. You know, it's uh, you're done quickly. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't want to lose track of the show and tell. Uh, there is one other tool, at least. Uh, yeah, the, the the final tool I got here, I guess it's it's yeah it's uh, it's just it, uh, has a, it has its own case. Yeah, yeah, it's it's just a knife. Uh, but That's the, not the, a but knife. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the thing is, a lot of people that get into bushcraft, uh, they uh, they get obsessed by knives. I'll, I'll make this three D <laughs> for the people at home. I'm gonna. <laughs> For your 3D Facebook stream. Stop knifing me. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I want the camera. Anyway, Uh, yes. And um, so I thought, well, let let me uh, bring a knife, which is really suitable for witchcraft and survival. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is, it's uh, you just need a pretty simple knife, as long as it's if it's is it strong, if it's uh, pretty sharp, and it's it, it helps if you know how to sharpen it yourself. Uh, and if it, you can carry it in a in a protected way, like in the, in a sheath like this, yeah. okay. uh, but this will this will only cost like ten euros, Sweet. so it's not that expensive. Yeah. Um, many people who get into bushcraft and survival, they they get obsessed by knives and they get two hundred <laughs> euro knives because they have uh, they they look prettier and they're they're done but custom made and stuff like that. Yeah. But you don't need it. Okay. And uh, but it's yeah. not the kind of thing people are often making themselves. Uh, no. <laughs> Smelt. Actually, there is a quite a big group of bushcrafters making them themselves, including the the blacksmithing. <laughs> yes, the smithing, right? Exactly. Yeah. Ah. yeah. But actually, uh, in the hacker yeah. community, there's a good amount of smithing going on. Oh, okay. But it's usually yep. to make. Uh, well, you never know. I'm sure some people are making swords, but uh, usually to make jewelry and such. Like, you know, yeah. 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 Yeah, and the, and the the whole bushcraft scene is all about making everything yourself, so the, including the knives and uh, mm-hmm. so yeah. But uh, yeah, you just need something like this, and, and actually. Uh, knives are important, but I, I, I would probably rank fire skills over over uh, uh, having a knife all the time. Mm. And uh, but yeah, it's it's really convenient. I, I'll, I will take it with me if I if I'm on a trip. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah. So this yeah. is what goes in your pack when you go out. <laughs> well, so this is the thing. This will go in my in my pack. The knife. Yeah. Uh, but oh, right. uh, but the bow drill, uh, I, I I wouldn't pack it. I would just make it uh, when okay. when I'm at a spot. And, and lately, most of the time, I just bring a lighter uh, oh. because <laughs> I'm, no. I'm 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 uh, it it will it would take me like uh, ninety minutes to two hours to to make a bow drill set. Okay. And so if 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 the emphasis is on walking, which uh, lately it's been on walking or okay. canoeing or skiing. Uh, then there's not. I, I don't take the time to make a whole set, and then uh, so yeah, I bring a lighter <laughs> or matches. Yeah, yeah. sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, question. First of all, from the audience, uh, the great Marlene comments, "Yay or yeah, depending on how you want to read it." Uh, yeah, caveman, show us some fire. <laughs> which, according to regulations of this apartment, we cannot do. Oh wait. There, there's, there's actually a video of me making fire with uh, a bow drill on my blog. It's the first post. So. Link in the show notes. Link in the show and notes. And I think that's Merlane for Ford, right? Yeah, of uh, she, <laughs> she, she, she's seen me making fire. Has she ever gone on any of these journeys? Out of curiosity. Uh, no, she no, hasn't. Okay. All right. Neither no. have I. Neither have I. Missing out. So that's... yeah, you're, you're still on, the, on the list as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I want to stay on that list, and I mean, I want to get off of that list by going. Yeah, yeah. By going. Yeah, I, think yeah. I'm, I think I'm ready, actually. Um, especially now that I know that the investment is low okay, yeah that's yeah yeah i mean the the financial investment okay mentally i probably have to do mm. some kind of meditation and steal steal myself up or what's the word get tough um one thing i wanted to ask uh mark and this is a bit more abstract perhaps uh, a lot of what you've come back to which is a great thing i think is the idea of the use of energy and um the choices that you make in terms of yeah, what you will do in terms of uh, survival and also what you're interested in versus what would cost too much to do. Mm. Do you find that you transfer or have a lot of these things that you've learned along the way over these years you take into your regular life? Are you in the workplace or, or in your social life? I don't know, but is it... Does it stay with you? No, no not, not at all. No, <laughs> Just no, checking. and it's and, and it's interesting because, uh, like, yeah, like you say, you really start to lo- look at how much energy the things take. Yeah. Like, for instance, 
uh, if you have to get some water and you have to get some firewood and then you, you start to figure out a way how to walk, uh, the, how to make the distance as small as possible. And, um, and normally you don't think like that. If you just need something from the kitchen, you just go there. And if you forget something, you, you just go again. there twice and it's not a big deal. Yeah. And uh, so, but yeah, you, 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 I totally lose that, that mindset <laughs> when I'm back in the civilized uh, world. And that's because uh. I, I have energy enough then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So then what do you bring back from Ooh. your trips to, with you to the civilized world? Uh, you mean like things? It could be anything, emotionally, getting... mentally, physically. Yeah, yeah uh, well, one of the things I take back is, is my, uh, the calluses on my hands. Mm -hmm. I, okay. I really get, uh, and this happens uh, even after three or four days in the woods. Uh -huh. uh, they, they really get thicker or thicker. They uh, a little bit stronger. Yeah. And it takes like three or four weeks to really to lose it again when, when, when you're back behind the computer and not, yeah. not using yeah. your hands. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but I, I think that the main thing I, I take back, well, it's for me, it's, uh, it's, it's a bit of vacation. It's, it's, uh, okay. I, I relax that way. So when yeah. I get back, I'm energized. I, I feel good. Yeah. It's, I think like for any, everybody who does a hobby and enjoys it, that's, yeah, then you, you, you come back energized and, uh, feeling good and and in the last few years i've noticed you've um maybe it was always this way but you've definitely taken on a role of not only of course always learning mm -hmm. uh but also like teaching and and passing a lot of this on it seems to be a sort of circle yeah it's uh i've never been really uh really into teaching like uh, for instance i thought maybe i should start my own survival school mm -hmm. and then i was like well that's not really me but what I uh, what I am trying to do the last couple of years is I, I go on a lot of uh, nature trekkings and just to try to take people along with me. Yeah. And uh, so and then it could be a way for people to go on a like like a one week hike or a one week canoe trip, uh, really enjoy nature outside the the, the fixed campsites or outside uh, busy places in a safe way and uh, and just enjoy being out there. And mm -hmm. so that's been a little bit of my of my uh, goal. It's hard to get people on such a trip. Yeah. And uh, one of the last latest ideas I had was um, uh, to to organize a 100 euro gear trip. So because I think maybe uh -oh. what stops some people on the trip is I, I need all the gear, right? All the the tent, uh, backpack, yeah. shoes, all that kind of stuff. And yeah. I don't have it. it. It takes a lot of money. Yeah. So, but I think if you take some cheaper, primitive things, you can you can still go. So I was thinking of organizing maybe a trip where you you would have to spend a hundred euros at the most on gear, and then you could go. <laughs> but huh. I, but I'm still working out the details uh, of yeah. that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so I, I guess just uh, yeah, getting friends a little bit. Back into nature. That's a little bit of a, of a thing I'm thinking about. Yeah. I think I would be most scared of being eaten by a bear. Like being eaten by bears would be the thing that would keep me from doing it. Huh. But are there bears in the Netherlands? I don't know. No, there, there aren't. Uh, and there actually, aren't. in most countries where there are, like for instance in Sweden, there are a few, and the the risks are really small for okay. uh, uh, of 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 that. Same so. as being eaten by sharks, then. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Or snakes, or all these wild animals. Yes, you're reminding uh, me. I'll tell me he's scared of snakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like eating me. Yeah, yeah. But there, yeah, risks are. I mean, you yeah. have to be careful, but they're they, they're they're small risks. So in what general. is the risk then? Um, like if Injury, you, huh? if, if you go <laughs> like on these, these one week trekkings or, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. uh I, I guess the, the main risks are, are getting lost. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you, so you need proper navigation skills, like, you know, how to read a, a map and, and use a compass and stuff like that. Disappearing skill. And, uh, okay. and a bit related to the getting lost thing is, is, uh, hypothermia. So if you get yeah. lost and, and you don't have enough clothing and the weather turns, uh, uh, I think that's probably uh, like on a, in our latitude, our part of the world. That's probably one of the highest killers. It's, it's just people getting cold. <laughs> yeah, I can and, imagine. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, but the thing is, yeah, if you prepare well, it's it's uh, yeah, it's not in the Netherlands. You're, I mean, it's really hard to get lost. <laughs> so <laughs> you, you, you can go basically <laughs> everywhere. But if you go to the out the outsides of Europe, you have to just take precautions and you okay. have to, to know what you're doing. Yeah, you try so hard to get lost. I, mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have gotten lost in Amsterdam many times. <laughs> Sometimes uh, all the keep streets walking. look the same. <laughs> but uh, so does this mean that you do not take a cell phone? 
I, actually, I do. Okay. But the places where I go, often there's no reception at all. So oh, no, no really? internet and no no uh, calling signal as well. Okay. Uh, but sometimes there is. So I, I always bring one for in case of emergencies. Mm-hmm. But uh, often it's just, uh, I, I can't use it. So. Yep. Do you have a nice compass? I, I do. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I do. And actually, I have uh, like a GPS watch as well. Uh-huh. Uh, most of the time, I'm just using the map uh, right, 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 because right. you got a nice big view of the area where you are. But uh, I, I do have I do have the gadgets uh, if they're if they're not not too. <laughs> yeah, heavy. because even the phone has a GPS, even if you're offline. It'll yeah, still the, track the, you. The, yeah, yeah. That that's true. Yeah, the, the the battery thing is is a problem with the phone. Yeah, but exactly. for a few hours that that will work for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, uh, Mark, I, there's the the link for people to follow, and um, more so than ever, I'm interested in the next journey. Is there anything on the schedule? Uh, <laughs> no pressure. Uh, I, well, so I, I'm working a little bit on the on the the, the cheap oh, trip, right, right, right. and uh, I, I've got an Iceland trip coming up, but that's with my regular bushcraft guys, and we're kind of exploring there. So so we're not we're not taking newbies there but uh, but there will be there will be many trips uh, for sure uh, i mean the exploring with the regulars is that a lot of what we just discussed like uh... yeah but then it's uh we go long distances i mean really uh we we're, we're pushing it a little bit and uh, in this case we're going to do a lot of fishing so um and uh and it's a new area i've never been to iceland and neither have these guys so it's it's like uh, a new exploring a new area for us yeah yeah do you have to get special permissions to do stuff like this? Hmm. Well, I mean, the, the, is it trespassing it? No, like? the, the 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 trek, the walking is almost never a problem anywhere. Okay. But for the wild camping, there uh, most European countries are a bit. Uh, the, I mean, like in Scandinavia, it's fine. In Scotland, it's fine. Uh, in France, it's okay if you're not too close to a road uh, but many european countries they don't like it that much wild camping so you have to google the country a bit before you do it right and uh, for fishing you need a permit but often it's, it's pretty cheap and uh, okay so yeah so yeah. for iceland no permit needed for this particular uh for fishing may- maybe oh, yeah. but uh, but the wild camping is no problem at all there that's this is completely legal yeah all yeah, right. interesting yeah all right well Mark, thanks so much. Amna, Thank thanks for joining. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. And we'll Thank catch you. you all back here, uh, usually on Tuesdays. Next Tuesday, we've got Tom Milo and Lara Kaptan, local celebrities in the world of uh, Arabic language script. And we're going to, we'll probably have some objects as well, <laughs> some typefaces to just put right into the camera. And uh, yeah, so stay tuned for that. And thanks a lot, everybody. Bye. 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 Ik wou toch iets leuks doen, nou dit is toch leuk. Hoor nou hoe mooi alles samen. You've been listening to a live edition of Realities Podcast. Like the show or leave a comment on Facebook, Realities Podcast. Or follow us on Twitter at Realities Cast. Subscribe to Realities Podcast in your favorite podcast app and get new shows automatically. Je zegt ik dwaal af, komt er nog veel? Antwoord ik, dit is het eerste deel. Geen zorgen, de volgende die is weer snel. Zodra de violen beginnen, voel je het vast wel. We zitten op de eerste rij. Kijk naar voren
horen, ben nu even stil. Dit is zo mooi, het is het laatste deel. Kijk niet zo verveeld, oh, wat wil je van mij? Straks komt het applaus en dan ik.